Today we're ranking WWE Elite Series 111 from worst to best, man. What is good, everybody? Today we are back with another edition of My Damn Thoughts where we take a full new WWE Elite action figure wave and we not only rank the set from worst to best, but I dive into a bunch of different things about the set, breaking down the best and worst of it, what I liked about the wave, what I didn't, and pick out specific things about each figure, just in case you guys missed the reviews. If you want in-depth reviews of any of these figures, you can check them out on the channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. Always go over there, leave a like, leave a comment on what you think, man. I always appreciate any comments and likes, dislikes, whatever the hell you want to say, man. I want to hear it down in the comment section below. But today we have Elite 111, man, and I'm going to run through some different categories, starting off with my first thoughts on this wave. And the first time I saw this wave, it was at WrestleMania 40 at the Superstore. They're on display, you know, breaking down everything there. I was in person for WrestleMania 40. And, you know, seeing a bunch of these figures, I was pretty hyped for them. You know, we knew about it. Any any sort of news or sort of rumors or leaks that are out there, man, we usually covered on the channel before the these things are officially announced, so be sure to subscribe if you guys missed that. You want action figure news about WWE and wrestling figures? This is your first place to stop, and we knew about this set coming. We knew it was coming. We saw the list early, and we know about Elite 112, 13, 14. We usually know about things early, and Elite 111 was no different. I knew we were getting Sandman. I knew we were getting a new Finn Balor. I was very intrigued with it, and seeing them in person at WrestleMania, I was I was middle of the road. I, I, I was middle of the road on, on certain things, but I thought it was a very very solid set. I thought it was a solid set. I like all the characters here. I like the selections. It's just the execution that I think is where it lacks in a few different ways. So we'll get into that, man. But who's going to be the shelf warmer in this set? Let's run through it. I'll tell you why I think this person is going to be the shelf warmer, and then I'll break down why it isn't a specific person. So Finn Balor, very hot on the trail, very hot in Judgment Day, must see television. You're going to grab Finn Balor. They see Finn Balor there. You got the nice jacket in there. You're going to be grabbing him. Sandman, first time on the line, very much a figure that we've been waiting on for a very long time. Sandman is flying off shells. Ricochet, it's his last Elite for Mattel, and it's his best Elite for Mattel. I think that he is not going to sit around very long. I know his last figure wasn't the best, but there was different things for that reason. This is your one-stop shop Ricochet right here. Tony D'Angelo, first time in the line. NXT talent, not the most popular superstar of all time, but he is the first time in the line, and I think people are going to want this cloth goods and these different things going on here. Trish Stratus, very good Trish. It is a modern Trish. She does come with a great fur coat. And then Cody Rhodes is Cody Rhodes, man. I mean, that's your that's your top of the line. It's your number one guy in the company right now. Undisputed champion. Beautiful gear. It's Cody Rhodes. He's flying off shelves. Long story short, Trish Stratus is going to be your shelf warmer, man. We discuss it a lot, and depending on what superstar you are, most of the time, the female figures do shelf warm more than the male figures. However, this is a solid rendition of Trish. Everything but the head sculpt I like, and I don't like the basic boots. The fur coat, the fur coat is amazing, but unfortunately, this will be the shelf warmer in the set. If I had to pick one, it would be Trish. For some reason, all of her newer figures always shelf warm in my area, whether it's a basic, an elite, a battle pack, her figures always shelf warm, unfortunately. So Trish is going to be the shelf warm in the set. If we look at the opposite of that, though, the hottest figure in the set is going to be Sandman. I went with Sandman, and you could say that it's going to be Cody, but I don't know, man, because knock the damn camera out, why don't you? I, you could say Cody, but for me, I don't think it's Cody just because we do have so many releases of him, and I know he's going to sell, but I would think that Sandman is going to be the most attractive figure in the set. People are going to want Sandman more than anybody else because everybody else besides Tony has multiple figures. Sandman has not had an elite. I think Sandman will be the hottest figure in the set. That's my take there. You can let me know. Also, he's the chase in the set. The Rex Quando Sandman, which is a figure I have to obtain. I cannot wait to get that figure. I'm definitely going to be searching it out. I have been lacking on some of the chases. I feel like I'm behind. I'm definitely going to have to, you know, get back in there and get on my grind for all those figures. I haven't gotten Shinsuke yet. I have not gotten the Pete Dunn, obviously, from Elite 110. So, definitely going to get my hand in there and try it. But Rex Quando Sandman and man is a great chase and I can't wait to search that figure out. I'm definitely going to and we will find it by God. But this same man is going to be hot on the trail. He is the chase figure. And then we get into a very interesting development. Can we move the damn camera over, Brad? It's funny because every figure in this set really doesn't have the best head sculpt. And that's what we're diving into next. Our best head sculpt in the land. Let's run through it. Finn Balor, this is a repeat head sculpt. This is the, uh, we saw this on Basics. We've seen this on the Elite 70 Jack the Ripper Demon Finn Balor. It's just repainted and we've seen it on some other figures there. So 
Finn Balor, I don't like to use repeat head sculpts. Well, Finn Balor, Ricochet, those two are repeat head sculpts. And then so you can leave it up to the other four. Trish's head sculpt is abysmal in my opinion. I don't think it really looks anything like Trish. I think if you stand her back far away, it looks like her. But anything closer than that, man... I do not see the likeness. It just looks a bit weird. It looks like Trish's sister or something like that. So I did not give it to Trish. Cody Rhodes, I don't like. I don't like the facial sculpt. I really wish they would reuse that Defining Moments head sculpt. I say it every time. The Defining Moments head sculpt is much better than this. And honestly, I just don't like the heads we're using for Cody right now. Hopefully we get some good ones and new ones at San Diego Comic-Con. But Cody Rhodes is most definitely not going to be getting it. Sandman, I like. And it's not my favorite of all time. And Tony D'Angelo, it's really down to these two. But I think Tony D'Angelo has the best head sculpt in the set. The Sandman looked pretty bad at WrestleMania, and then seeing it here in person, it actually looks a lot better. So if you're on the fence about the Sandman head sculpt, I think it does look a lot better in person than it did at WrestleMania on display and in images. I was going to give the nod to Tony D'Angelo. You know, I think that it looks the most like him, even though I think they might could even use a darker skin tone for him. And they low-key did him wrong, man. They, they did him dirty with the body mold, which we'll get into. But Tony D'Angelo probably has the best head sculpt in the set, all things considered because I'm not going to give it to an old head sculpt. I only give it to, you know, that category is for brand new head sculpts in this wave. So there's that. Next up, we have the best articulation. This one could really only be one figure and that is going to be Ricochet. Ricochet is phenomenal. He moves around great. He's got a great ab crunch. He is on ball joints. He is, you know, double jointed. He does have Johnny Gargano syndrome, but he is going to be able to do every pose that you possibly want. If you want to break down the rest of the figures in the set on why they don't have good articulation, back has that dumb body mold. He honestly can move around good, but he has John Cena shoes and stiff legs. Sandman and Tony D'Angelo have sweatpant legs, and the Tony D'Angelo does have a new leg mold, but he has John Cena shoes. Both of these guys do. That's going to disqualify you right there. Trish Stratus has basic boots, and then Cody Rhodes is stiff as hell. So the Ricochet had to win the best articulation, and honestly, wasn't particularly close. I would say that Ricochet, it knocks it out of the park. I think Ricochet is the best articulation, and that's the end of that, man. It's it's just the way it is. Next up is the worst articulation. That's going to go to Trish Stratus. Again, she has these damn basic boots, man. Look at that right there. It is 2024, man. No ankle pivot. They got to get rid of this shish right here, man. On top of that, the diaphragm pivot is actually better than a lot of women's figures. You're fine from Modern Mattel, but it's still not great, man. Still not great. Something they definitely need to improve on, but I want to see elite and ultimate feet on these women figures. We've seen it with Bianca Belair. We've seen it on Charlotte. They definitely need to get rid of this basic boot mode. We've seen it on so many characters. Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus, they use it on a lot. And Becky Lynch probably being the most notable. They got to get rid of it. They got to give us something else there. But Trish Stratus is the worst articulation. But... We're getting into the best accessory now of this entire thing. Let's just get this out of the way. This entire wave had just amazing accessories. I mean, from Trisha's fur coat to Tony D'Angelo's jacket to Ricochet's entrance vest to Sandman's long barbed wire and 27 cans of beer soda. You have the Finn Balor jacket. I just wanted to give an honorable mention to every accessory in this set because there's so much that you get in this wave. And I had a ton of fun just playing around with it. I Like, dude, this barbed wire is amazing. Low-key wanted to give it to that, but the cloth goods that are on some of these figures is just too good. And I couldn't pick one. So, I mean, you, you can let me know. Do you think it's Trish's jacket with the fur, which is immaculate? The entrance vest, Tony. I would give it right here to these four. You have Finn's jacket, Ricochet's vest, Tony's jacket, and Trish's jacket. All four of these are insane. Now, Cody Rhodes, all he got was an interchangeable head, which is a head skull we'd seen a hundred times before. And not a hundred times, but you know what I mean. And then Sam Man, he came with a shish ton as well. So, just hats off to this entire line, man. And hats off to this entire line. A lot of companies, they take shortcuts with accessories. I think Mattel does a pretty damn good job of pitching us accessories and getting fresh things into the line. So I want to give a huge shout out to this entire wave here for that. But now with all that being said, man, it is time to rank this set from worst to best in my own personal opinion. Now, you got to go through the criteria for the ranking before we get into it. Different criteria that goes into the ranking. Excitement level for the figure. Likeness to the character on my television. Execution of details and just details in general. But not only details, but execution of those details, posability and feel in hand, overall production and execution of everything involved with the figure. So this should be a fun one, man. Let's buckle the hell up. Starting out at the bottom, you may be able to guess it, man. And it's, it really pains me because I want it to be good, but it's just not there yet, man. It is going to be the Trish figure. 
I don't hate this figure, but I don't like it that much, man. The head sculpt really lacks. I love the jacket, like I said. It's a very good jacket. And I like the gear, really, I do. And I like the hair. I really like the hair piece, but... At the end of the day, the head sculpt is what matters the most on a figure, I'd argue, and this one just doesn't get the job done for me. At number five, I'm going with Tony D'Angelo. Now, don't get me wrong, Tony's talented, but I am not the biggest fan of his work in general, so I wasn't super excited to get this figure. I do like the execution of the new leg mold. I hate the John Cena shoes. They did him wrong. They gave him frumpy, dumpy, lumpkin's torso. I do like the cloth goods that he has and everything going on there, but... This figure's execution could have been much better, and I think more likeness to the character on TV probably would have lifted him a little higher in this ranking, which brings us to number four. And for number four, I'm going with Finn Balor. You guys know I am a huge Finn Balor guy. If there are no longer any supporters of Finn Balor on planet Earth, that means that I am deceased. You know what I mean? I, I will forge the path for Finn Balor every day, but this figure just has a lot of problems. It's very similar to the Elite 107. I hate the formula they use. I hate the John Cena shoe mold. Old ass head sculpt. Just a lot of different things there that really bring that figure down. I had to put him at number four. He could not go any higher, unfortunately. That leads us into the number three figure. And number three may shock some people, but it simply pisses me the hell off. And that is going to be the Elite 111 Cody Rhodes figure, man. I do not like the way this figure feels in hand whatsoever. It, ha I know I do need to pop the legs off and pop them back on to kind of fix it, but he's so stupid. Still. And he's like leaning over and I have paint chip now because of the weird thighs that the head sits too low on the neck The head sculpts not good But what is good is that it's Cody Rhodes and it has a great formula and it is a beautiful attire So that's gonna get him pretty high in the ranking there But Cody Rhodes that figure is just pisses me off every time I pick it up because all of his other elites are so buttery smooth And then you pick that up and you want to throw it the hell out in the yard So there's just a lot of things there that Cody Rhodes could be so much better I don't like the pinless legs going on, but we are moving on to our number two and our number one and for me this was actually a very close race but I had to get this video done so that I can move on to action figure surgery and I wanted to add that in there there at the end but number two is going to be Ricochet and number one for me personally is going to be Sandman now we're going to dive into all the different things on why this is number two Ricochet fantastic figure best Ricochet figure of all time I love posing that guy around I love the gear I call it Buffalo Beals Ricochet I know apparently apparently it's supposed to be Optimus Prime when I look at that gear I don't think any Thing about Optimus Prime. I, and I'm not like some Transformers connoisseur, but this shit, like, I don't look at this and go, oh yeah, that's Optimus Prime. It just looks like a color blocking, I don't know, just regular, I think of Gundam before I think of, of Optimus Prime. You know, I don't know. That's, that's me though. I don't know. Looks like the Buffalo Bills to me, but I love the gear. I love the figure. Very good cloth goods. He does have Johnny Gargano syndrome, which is bummerific, but we're going to fix him up on action figure surgery. But number one is going to be Sandman. Sandman, I've been waiting over a decade to have him in the Mattel Elite line. I mean, it's, he was always one of my favorites growing up. And to actually get a figure of him in the Elite line for after waiting so very long, making customs, wanting one desperately for Mattel, and finally getting one, he had to go up there. I mean, excitement level had to be through the roof. And is it the greatest execution of the character? No. I think the formula could be completely tweaked. I like the Kamikaze Reebok. I like everything going on with it in terms of what we got so far. Again, I will be trying to fix it up in some ways, but I think at the end of the day, just having a Sandman right now, unfortunately, that's the that's legitimately the bar. The bar right now is just to have a Sandman, and that's what we have here. But I will say, if uh, Ricochet didn't have Johnny Gargano syndrome, or maybe, you know, a few things fell differently, or Cody Rhodes was just perfect in every way and didn't have the stiff legs and had the defining moments or a similar head sculpt or something like that or Finn Balor's formula was accurate or something like that. This wave could be completely changed. Sandman is at the top because the rest of the wave was not executed the best and again Ricochet was legitimately a uh, nose hair away from taking the spot at the number one place and maybe tomorrow you ask me Ricochet may be at the beginning or the top of the ranking but this is my full ranking of WWE Elite 111, man. I appreciate all of you guys for watching. I'd love to know your thoughts and ranking below of Elite 111 down in the comment section below. I greatly appreciate it. But huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. Appreciate all those fellows over there. Thank you guys so very much, as always. But I think that is going to wrap it up for me, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Again, I'd want to know your thoughts on Elite 111. Slowly approaching San Diego Comic-Con, where I will be out there to give you guys all the news and be covering everything in person, man. So it should be fun. But I'm getting the hell out. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I will catch you guys later.